come short, come tall, come young and old, the greatest love story ever told. Introducing the King, a.k.a. Dad. Hello. I prefer Big Daddy. And now introducing his creations. I'm Adam. I'm Yvette. Introducing Sid. Fast forward hundreds of years. When we properly interrogate our possible... Dad was clearly referring to actually isn't necessarily in conjunction to... I disagree. I know clearly that in fact we should slaughter a sacrifice to cover the mess. Agreed. And they covered and they messed and they covered and messed and covered and messed and recovered and messed again until Dad, I mean Big Daddy, saw no other option. Son, I have a job for you. Dad saw fit that his love for his creations, not only the chosen ones, but every heartbeat that pumped on earth was strong enough for him to send his only son to the slaughter. John chapter 3 verse 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What is it Dad? You see that world? I see them Dad. I need you to save them. They seem fine. From sin. Well, why me? Because you're perfect. Sounds like fun. Well, it's not always going to be fun. There's going to come a time that they're going to hate you and they're going to hurt you. And you're going to have to carry their sins on a cross. And you have to die for them. And exactly that happened. Introducing Virgin Mary. <laughs> Virgin received a gift. She was handpicked by Big Daddy to deliver his son to earth. Fast forward 12 years, Joseph and Mary lost the son of God. We must get rid of him. Banish him. We, no, crucify him. And so they did. I knew it. I can't watch. I can't watch. He had to watch. Dad, Dad. Which means, Dad, why have you forsaken me? And with one last breath, he said, it is finished. Dad's grief was so intense the whole planet shook. And one of the Jews said, He really was the Son of God. <laughs> Matthew, chapter 27, uh, verse 54. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake, and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Fast forward three days. He is risen! <laughs> Before the sun returned home, he visited a few friends and up to 500 eyewitnesses historically confirmed seeing and resurrected. Years passed from 500 believers to 5 million to many more. He's still concerned about reaching and saving every heartbeat. Welcome home. We did it, Dad. We did, but... Oh no, there's a but? Well, not everyone believes you yet, so it's up to those that you spoke to, to reach and show your love and my love to all my children. And thus the Great Commission was born, so three hugs all round. <laughs> First thing I want to say is that most of you know me, but for those who don't, my name is Dave. Uh, we come from South Africa on a mission trip just to love the people of Aung and Thailand. And uh, yeah, it's been great so far. Uh, today I'm going to be preaching on John 4, which is when uh, Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at the well. So if you have a part, I'm going to be talking from uh, John 4, verses 1 to 26. Uh, if you don't, I'm going to read it now, quickly. So, starting from verse 1, John 4. Now Jesus learned that the first section of the conversation, what Jesus is saying, and that means it's living order. Your deep need today is a situation of this living order. 
That's the first thing he does. He, he went there knowing full well who she was, and he doesn't say that first. So, what is living order? Living order, we all have that thing inside of us that needs to be quenched. That hole, some people have called it the God-shaped hole. pointed in our lives, but we all know it's there. This, this emptiness that we need to fill it somehow. We all try and fill it and everything else. You know, bad stuff like drugs and alcohol, sex and all that, good stuff. You know, you can also fill it with good stuff like your wife and, you know, girlfriend or friendships or whatever. We all try to fill it with very good stuff. But ultimately that's wrong because that's replaced Jesus. And Jesus is in the business of pursuing that thing that took his place and replacing it with himself. And that's what he's doing in this passage. So by verse 15, Jesus has shown two things. That we all have a deep need inside of us to have, to have that thing full inside of us, a thing that we can't really pinpoint. We all have that. And number two, only living water can fill that. Only living water can truly, perfectly, and perfectly fill what we need. So by verse 16, this woman says to Jesus, Please give me this water so I won't have to keep coming here. So she doesn't quite understand what living water is yet. But she understands that she needs it. And how does Jesus respond? Go call your husband and come back. Now that just seems very strange. It's like she just said, yes, I agree with you, I need living order. And then Jesus says, go call your husband and come back. It seem like a uh, but there is. And we get that from understanding more what the woman, uh, why the woman had had five husbands and now is living with a sick man. To, to flesh that out a bit, actually, you know, men in the culture of today, men the higher social position, they were respected socially, and because of that they earned a higher income. Uh, and because of that, if you wanted to be anyone as a woman, you simply had to be married. If you weren't married, you were the lowest of the low socially, and you wouldn't really earn an income. So to be anyone, you had to be married. So her pursuit of men was a pursuit of significance. She just So Jesus tried again and again to show the woman that she needs living water, uh, but she doesn't get it. So what does Jesus do? He exposes the woman's heart and shows her why she doesn't have it. She doesn't have the living water that comes from Jesus because she has tried to find her living water in men. That's the fact of the story. So Jesus loves her enough to show her her idol. broken and unsatisfied because they can never fool you like Jesus can because they weren't meant to. You were, full, you were made to only find your satisfaction and fulfillment in Jesus. So that is the woman who spun. Jesus has shown her that she needs living water, shown her why she doesn't have it because she's trying to fill it in men. Fill it with men, I should say. And how does she respond? Well, in verse 20, Yes, I agree with you. I can see that you're a prophet because you just exposed my heart. She says immediately after that another sentence that sounds like no one understands what's going on. Verse 20. I just was worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that Now that's strange again because that doesn't seem to be a logical, uh, you know, train of thought. But what she's essentially saying is, track it out again. It. She's trying to find it in men, and her response essentially is, Where can I worship? Where can I worship? That's what she just said. I don't remember anything that I want you to remember this next thing that I said. We cannot help but want more of the things we love most. We cannot help but want more of the things we love most. If you love money more than anything, If you love, say, whatever, even good things, like I said, but if you love it more than God, you're going to want it more than God. You want to have more of it, uh, more than God. So that's one of the main reasons why this woman has had five 
husband that was now living with six men because she loved the men more than God. And she just wanted to consume it more and more and more. And Jesus shows her uh, who her God is. to rescue her and be her living water. So the fact is that we worship our way into sin. We want at that moment, we want the sin more than we want God. Sin isn't a sin issue per se. It's what we worship determines how we live. Right? What we worship in our heart determines how we live with our actions. And that's why we sin. We want it more than God in that moment. So how do we beat that? Well, this gives us a good template. This woman's response when, she, when she's shown her that she's sinning is saying, where can I worship? When we start worshiping God, we start worshiping ourselves and getting into it. We worship our way into 